Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new episode of Back to Basics. I am still Pastor Don, despite all efforts to the contrary, and joining me is the magnificent Courtney Fraley. So we are continuing our trek through the wilds of Genesis. As you can see, we are uh, we have brand new backgrounds, which means we're totally in a different location and didn't just change our backgrounds to be annoying in between recording sessions. Um, we are showing our Doctor Who flag this week because we're coming off of Christmas and some Christmas specials and we're all feel pretty excited about the Doctor, who is basically sci-fi Jesus. So, you yeah, know, same thing. Squint a little, you'll be fine. Um, Where's so the lie? <laughs> we are, we just finished 43 and we're going into Genesis chapter 44 right now. So where we left off was Joseph got all of his brothers back, plus Benjamin, uh, the one he was super internally trauma bonded to. And we are all sitting down for dinner, which admittedly is freaking all the brothers right the hell out because the second in charge only to Pharaoh guy has invited him over to his house for dinner, which random peasants from outside the country who are also Hebrews and aren't supposed to sit down to eat with Egyptians generally don't get that kind of treatment. Uh, so there is a lot of Joseph fucking around and the brothers waiting to find out. So shall we begin the process of finding out directly? Yeah, I don't see why not. <laughs> All right. We got Genesis chapter 44 and uh, we discussed in advance and we're going to try to slag through this entire chapter. Now, there's two main stories in this. There's Joseph detaining Benjamin and there is judah pleading for benjamin's release so we've got these two pieces and we're going to just go ahead and do the whole thing are you ready oh you've disappeared and you're back who's shall ready I, shall i read this one or do you want to you did the last one i can do this one if you like it, it is kind of fun to read them and go for it. Don't let me yuck your yum. Enjoy reading the scripture, dear. <laughs> All right. Joseph detains Benjamin. Then he commanded the steward of his house, fill the men's sacks with food, as much as they can carry, and put each man's money in the top of a sack. Put my cup, the silver cup, in the top of the sack of the youngest, with his money for the grain. And he did as Joseph told him. And as, as soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away with their donkeys. When they had gone only a short distance from the city, Joseph said to his steward, Go, follow after the men. And when you overtake them, say to them, Why have you returned evil for good? Why have you stolen my silver cup? Is it not from this that my Lord drinks? Does he not indeed use it for divination? You have done wrong in doing this. When he overtook them, he repeated these words to them. They said to him, Why does my Lord speak such words as these? Far be it from your servants that they should do such a thing. Look, the money that we found at the top of our sacks we brought back to you from the land of Canaan. Why then would we steal silver or gold from your Lord's house? Should it be found with any one of your servants, let him die. Moreover, the rest of us will become my Lord's slaves. He said, Even so, in accordance with your words, let it be. He with whom it is found shall become my slave, but the rest of you shall go free. Then each one quickly lowered his sack to the ground, and each opened his sack. He searched, beginning with the eldest and ending with the youngest, and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. At this, they tore their clothes. Then each one loaded his donkey, and they returned to the city. Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house while he was still there, and they fell to the ground before him. Joseph said to them, what deed is this that you have done? Do you not know that one such as I can practice divination? And Judah said, what can I say? What can we say to my Lord? What can we speak? How can we clear ourselves? God has found out the guilt of your servants. Here we are then, my Lord's slaves, both we and also the one in whose possession the cup has been found. But he said, far be it for me that I should do so. Only the one in whose possession the cup was found shall be my slave. But as for you, go up in peace to your father. Then Judah pleads for Benjamin's release. Did you want me to do it all, or as you like? I can take over from did here you if you like. It? Or oh no, I mean, did you want to do a break in the middle and talk about that, or we can? I mean, either way, like it's one contiguous story throughout. 
So this is just uh, all right. Let's keep yeah, ro- let's, let's, let's keep rolling with it. Judah pleads for Benjamin's release. Then Judah stepped up to him and said, Oh, my Lord, let your servant please speak a word in my Lord's ears and do not be angry with your servant for you are like Pharaoh himself. My Lord asked his servants saying, have you a father or a brother? And we said to my Lord, we have a father, an old man and a young brother, the child of his old age. His brother is dead. He alone is left of his mother's children and his father loves him. Then you said to your servants, bring him down to me so that I may set my eyes on him. We said to my Lord, the boy cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. Then you said to your servants, unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you shall see my face no more. When we went back to your servant, my father, we told him the words of my Lord. And when our father said, go again, buy us a little food, we said, we cannot go down. Only if our youngest brother goes with us, will we go down. For we cannot see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Then your servant, my father said to us, you know that my wife bore me two sons. One left me. And I said, surely this has been, surely he has been torn to pieces and I have never seen him since. If you take this one also from me and harm comes to him, you will bring down my gray hairs in sorrow to Sheol. Now, therefore, when I come to your servant, my father, and the boy is not with us, then as his life is bound up in the boy's life, when he sees that the boy is not with us, he will die. And your servants will bring down the gray hairs of your servant, our father, with sorrow to Sheol. For your servant became surety for the boy to my father, saying, if I do not bring him back to you, then I will bear the blame in the sight of my father all my life. Now, therefore, please let your servant remain as a slave to my Lord in place of the boy and let the boy go back with his brothers. For how can I go back to my father if the boy is not with me? I fear to see the suffering that would come upon my father. Hmm. Let's see into that. So. Thoughts. getting out of performance mode (laughs) well we're still getting through like a lot of the uh the setup here like this is just as it was with the last passage in the last episode joseph is i find it interesting from a modern perspective and considering that the it's all just a big miscommunication thing is one of my greatest pet peeves in storytelling in general like it's a, a trope that i hate just mm-hmm. deeply it pisses me off every time yeah. um they are making it abundantly clear in this that they are doing their best to carefully and itemized and like you know this is not like an indictment of wrongs this is just simply a list of things that happened and this is what this person did and this is what this person did and like seriously we didn't do anything like with they've got receipts you know <laughs> like stacked up the communication is happening appropriately it's just that Joseph is fucking with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's... <laughs> that's such an no, asshole thing to do. It is, and the thing is... <laughs> is and, every Old Testament character going to be like this? Mostly. I mean, like, they're all human, so I guess yeah. so, yeah. Like, and this is the, like worth repeating that every Old Testament character is human, and they're going to do remarkable things, but they're also going to do terrible things along the way, too. Um, some of them will, like like an Abraham will do mostly terrible things. And then just like one really good thing. Like that's kind of how it is. I mean, let's not forget that the, the journey of great Moses starts out with a murder. <laughs> like all of the biblical characters get into some shit. And Joseph here is no exception. It's also worth identifying too, that like his whole give them their money back, but don't tell them about it just to freak them out plan didn't work the first time. So he's basically doing the same thing again. Like this is a guy who's built up how he wants us to go in his head. Like, hey, hey, watch, I do it again. Yeah. It's more like this. It's like, <laughs> like you, you, you almost see that Joseph has built this up in his head how he expects us to go and how he expects them to react, and they're just not doing it. So he's like, okay, we're gonna try this again. And we're gonna be a little more specific this time. <laughs> like until I get the reaction I want. So, like, yeah, that's a big part of of what's happening here is he's he's trying to get the reactions he wants. He's not getting it. 
and um it's yeah he's still fixated on benjamin and this is really just the last chapter just dialed up to 11 again like he's he's ramping it up he's like okay we're gonna do it again but stronger this time and repetition yeah the whole thing comes to an end uh in the next episode where he just can't take it anymore and like he's edged for too long and it just has to come to a stop um god really i mean i'm sorry this is basically joseph just trauma edging here that's exactly what's going on we have the title of the episode trauma edging yep that's that is that is it that is what has happened uh we have done it we have won at the bible congratulations but yes um that's really all this is and the details are of course important it, like but it's all theatrics and you're right to point out that the brother's like no 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 after the silver shit the last time we kept fucking receipts like <laughs> we did everything you asked itemized list you can strike dead anybody who didn't do what you wanted to if they didn't evil then fucking kill them because there's no way no absolute way we did fucking benjamin really like that's that's how it plays <laughs> out <laughs> Like, God I damn it, do anything. Yeah, and the thing is, of course, Benjamin didn't do anything. Uh, this is again Joseph just fucking with them some more and trying to get at all of them. And he's he's trying to get he's trying to get it back to to Jacob. Because that's 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 what he's trying to 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 work in here. Um and that's where we're going to get uh, two more chapters yet before Jacob gets in on this. But the truth of the matter is Joseph can't keep it together. And at the beginning of the next passage, that's where he's just going to let it all out. Uh, pun very much intended. Um, and now we, uh, but right now that, yeah, we're just, we're dialing it up. And you can see, this is one of those passages where you can see why this is a perennial favorite in Sunday school, because this is, this is pageantry right here. Like you could do it. You could do an entire mid-year children's pageant just on this passage. Like, like, oh no, I will go down into shale. I will tear my clothes and look at me. Don't take my Benji away. Like it's hyper theatric uh, for good reason. Like it's meant to really, oh God. And this is like, this is, remember what with, these... this, with, this, with the silver going back and forth i'm starting to picture some sort of twisted version of duck season rabbit season, duck season, rabbit season. but remember what these stories were originally these are fucking campfire stories oral histories gotta keep it like, interesting or the kids won't pay any attention but also the repetition to pay early so that it gets committed to memory so that your stories will live on that's why the repetition like, is there. Partly because repetition. Storytelling, is everyone. Well, yeah. And that all this repetition is here because repetition is emphasis in ancient Hebrew, but also because, like, yeah, they needed to drive this shit home. And they needed to build suspense. And they needed to get people super duper duper interested and get ready uh, for the, the climax of the story, um, which is, you know, coming quite soon. So... Yeah, that's basically all that is going on here. I, I, I feel a little bit bad because like there's no real deep theology yet. We were at 34 verses of the chapter. You know, I keep thinking this. It's it's something that's really changed about the show since the beginning is we started out with so much of like, okay, what does this actually mean? What is the context? Can we have some like ancient Hebrew origin clues and stuff like you know what what is the context for any of this the story itself is kind of chunky and yeah. hard to follow in a way um does it feel real in any way and so there's like a whole lot of parsing to do yeah. when we get into this part it's more of a story that we can kind of recognize because again i feel like we're learning about the essence of storytelling in addition to the foundations of our religion yeah. Pardon me, this doing this. about the fascinating this tells us a lot about the cohesiveness of this as a quote unquote single book, which it isn't. I mean, there were multiple authors creating multiple books <laughs> for multiple traditions that got combined into what Genesis eventually became. Uh, Aren't so a lot of these books like their own sort of compilations? 
going back far enough, they sure as hell could have been. Like you're you're you know tickling at the edges of prehistory here, so we can't say for sure. But um, like there, there's a reason why Genesis one, two, three, the creation story and stuff like that are markedly literarily different from the Joseph story. What we're reading in Joseph here at the end of Genesis, like narratively has more in common with the gospels in the new Testament than it does with the beginning of Genesis in terms of its narrative structure and story. Um, and that's because like it was written later and it was written for a different purpose. Like we've gone out. Of, it tells you how old the beginning parts of the story are. Right. That's how far back they date. A lot of this stuff was put down or at least edited during the Babylonian exile, um, which was thousands of years uh, after when these events take place at a minimum. Um, and so they, like, they may have existed as text fragments up until that point, but their first cohesion happens during the exile. And the, the stories in that date back farther, but compare that to the oral histories that comprise the beginning of Genesis, and you're dealing with things that are orders of magnitude farther back in history. Mm -hmm. um, and so now we're seeing, like, the, the style we've settled into now in late Genesis is going to remain consistent roughly throughout the uh, the Old Testament. I mean, the way that this is written and the way that, as far as narrative stuff goes, at least, Exodus will be similar. Uh, Leviticus, of course, will be different. Psalms will be different. Song of Solomon is going to be a fucking wet and wild ride when we get there. Um, they're all going to, like, yeah. think that things that are different the literary slide genres. slide of the Bible. Yeah, right? Uh, but, like, Things that are different literary genres look different, but in terms of like the actual narrative pieces of the Bible, stylistically, we're pretty well home now. Um, but we had to get there first by getting through the truly ancient shit, and now we have arrived. How, how genuinely old is this story? I don't recall if we talked about this when we started Genesis or not. How genuinely old is this story potentially? Because it's clearly prehistoric. Like it's yeah. pre-written by a long time. And, and people have lived in that part of the world for a stupidly long time. Yeah. Like that's not very far out of Africa. That yeah. is very much still hunter-gatherers and shit. Mm -hmm. Like there right. are there are theories out there that can trace elements of even like the Chinese language back to proto forms of Hebrew. Um, so Ooh, yeah, that's interesting shit. You want to go down a rabbit hole? Look oh, at the theory of man. language monogenesis. That's a that's we're not doing an episode on that because I, we could go on for forever. But you're right to point out that this is one of the oldest areas of human settlement outside of Africa. So yeah. It does go back a ways. And this is after Egypt has obviously existed. But the theory here is that we are pre-pyramid Egypt. Because the story of Exodus places us roughly in the time of, I think it's Ramses. Uh, which is, you know, we we take it as stereotypical. But the idea of the, the Hebrews building the pyramids and stuff is consistent with the placement of the Exodus story. So this is pre-pyramid Egypt, which again, remember that you know Cleopatra, who we tend to hilariously think old. Yeah, C consider Cleopatra the most famous Egyptian that of, of the ancient period that just about anyone would know. Uh, lives closer in time to you and me than to the pyramids. Uh, so exactly how far? Uh, that's a. It's assuming this is hilariously an exact... far. Yeah, hilariously far. Assuming this is meant to be an entirely historically accurate account, which you know, literary. But if si if it's a matter of signs point to yes, then it's prudent to ask the question how yeah. how far. Like, yeah, whew, interesting. stupidly old is probably the best answer I can give you. Um, and that without me getting into particulars of biblical temporal research. Yeah, stupidly old is about as far as we're going to go. Thousands of years, certainly, bordering on tens. Um, Wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. <laughs> exactly. Our backgrounds are appropriate we're both in for this discussion. Anyway. <laughs> so we're both yeah, in David Tennant Tardises. <laughs> yeah. No. But that that being said, like, yeah, as for the passage itself, it's really just winding the audience up for the climax. It's going to be in the next chapter, which chapter forty five is 
the first of several climaxes because we've been edging for a while. Um, and we're going to get the revelation of Joseph to his brothers. Oh, please. Never. Um, we're going to get the arrival of Joseph's whole family in Egypt. Uh, and then we start kind of winding, winding down. We get the end of the famine. Uh, we get Jacob's blessing and Oh, that's death. right, the big famine. Uh, the seven they're in years. the middle of it now, but it does have to end. We get the final ending of Jacob, which is two chapters worth. And then we get Jacob's burial and the then Joseph's burial and death. And that's it for Genesis. So like, that's still a lot. <laughs> well, the thing of it, basically right now, next chapter is our big climax. And then everything is basically the end of Return of the King. Like we're going to get like nine or ten different endings. And then that's it. Did you, how is it pronounced? Denouement? Yeah, the denouement. Uh, I I can't speak French to save my life. I can't either, but I pretend once in a while just for comedy's sake. Um. So yeah, and that's that's pretty much it. So we have we have worked ourselves up for the revelation in the next chapter. This is all just build up to final release. Next chapter to get you all worked up for our next episode is going to be the big climax of this story. Um, I am choosing my words carefully because it is hilarious to me. Um. Because I'm going to make a big running joke. I mean, I we did miss some potential sack conversations, if I recall correctly. Oh my lord! There, I, I could get into a discussion on how hilarious that got on a different. No, podcast. you just link link it below. Link yep. it below. Maybe even maybe if how are our internet wizards? Can we have perhaps a a link right here? Maybe. Now, yeah. Someone who's doing the editing? Maybe. maybe we'll see what we can do. Um, no promises. Uh, It'll so, either be really cool or I'll look really silly, and either one is worthwhile. All things are possible with God. <laughs> Thanks, man. All the confidence. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm here for. Uh, is there any last bits you want to chew at with this one? Like, there wasn't as much here as one might have expected. Yeah, no, I'm ready to crawl back in my hole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. Then I if will... You, if you have any questions that I didn't hit on, you know, please... You know, be the be what you want to see and say it in the comments or comment and ask us on Discord because yeah, Pastor Don here answers questions fairly um, regularly unless it's Christmas season, Discord, in which case I'm swamped. So. Yeah, I I yeah, apologize we're to still our, humans. Yeah, I apologize to our own community because this has been Christmas. I have been so freaking exhausted and swamped with a million different things, and I am behind on answering questions. But I will be catching up over break. I promise. Um, but that said, as you may have noticed from this conversation, we do in fact have a Discord server, which is the heart of our community. So come join us in that place because it is fun and there are discussions and occasionally pictures of cute children and or dogs. All of which are worth seeing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you can leave your leave your comments below because we really do like to hear from you. I'm always excited when I get a YouTube comment that isn't actually spam. So please feel free to do that. And don't be like the one other example of that where somebody commented and just wanted to start an argument about some weird shit. Honest comments are appreciated. Don't be a troll. Um, and if you want to do anything to help us out right now, the best thing you can do is what Courtney tells you to do, which is... Like, share, and subscribe. Those things are fantastic. Trust me. It's really, really helpful. We're a tiny little church and we're not really... Like collecting too much in terms of money yet. So like, please like put eyes in front of us so we can build our community because that is the most helpful thing you can do for us right now. So you can continue to tune in and listen to us swear profusely and make terrible jokes about the Bible as we learn what's actually happening in this book as we are so close to the end uh, of Genesis, not the Bible, because it's a lot bigger than that. Oh, we're going to do this forever. Um, so... That being said, have yourselves a wonderful week and we will catch you on the flip side. See you in the next episode. Take care, everybody. Bye. And happy new year. Bye.